Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. A new regulatory capability for advanced drone pilots in Canada is called Extended VLOS. In this video, I'll discuss how it works and share some practical tips for safe flying. Extended VLOS is new in the 2025 Canadian RPAS regulations and is a capability available to all existing and new advanced RPAS pilots, starting from November the 4th, 2025. The extended VLOS rules basically allow you to legally fly your drone or RC aircraft on a long distance operation well out of visual line of sight, up to 3.7 kilometers away. This could be extremely useful for agricultural applications, maybe construction inspections, or any other case where you need to fly out of the normal range of vision, but not actually that far. And you just need your advanced certification, not the much more elaborate level one complex pilot certification, just your advanced. The 2025 regulations include a definition for extended VLOS and two related rules. 901.74, which is general restrictions for both extended VLOS and sheltered operations. I talk about sheltered operations in another video. Plus 901.75, which specifies requirements for the visual observer, or what they call spotters usually, required for extended VLOS. You need to read all three of these things together to fully understand how it works. Feel free to pause the video if you want to read the actual text, or, well, just keep going and I'll explain it much more simply. So, in layman's terms, an extended VLOS operation means flying your drone beyond visual line of sight, aided by a spotter who watches for manned aircraft or other hazards in the area of the flight. An extended VLOS flight is restricted to 3.7 kilometers from the pilot, who must also be located and stay at the launch site. The spotter must also be within 3.7 kilometers of the drone, but these are not additive. The crucial restriction is that the drone stays within 3.7 kilometers of the pilot. By the way, you can have more than one spotter if you wish, and this may very well improve flight safety, but it doesn't allow you to fly any further than 3.7 kilometers from the, you guessed it, pilot. I've confirmed this with Transport Canada, by the way. Your spotter needs to meet all the normal requirements for visual observers as per Rule 901.20. They need to be trained on their responsibilities. They need to communicate with their pilot in a timely and reliable way and so forth. The spotter can be standing right beside the pilot or in some other location, as long as they can effectively communicate with the pilot. In addition to these normal spotter rules, for extended VLOS, the spotter must have at least their basic RPAS pilot certification. Just their basic though. And when the drone flies beyond visual line of sight, the spotter only needs to maintain unaided visual contact with the airspace where the drone is operating. They don't need to actually see the drone, just the area in the sky where it is flying. The requirement here is for the spotter to watch for manned aircraft or other hazards and to communicate to the pilot, along with, well, recommended actions such as reduce altitude right now. Now, even though the spotter doesn't need to maintain sight of the drone in the extended VLOS situation, you may still want to make your drone more conspicuous when flying longer range flights like this by adding a high vis colored skin or maybe a strobe light assuming these don't affect your drone's flight capabilities. Just a tip. So there are several difficulties to consider when observing the airspace where the drone is flying. First is the most obvious. Where the heck is the drone flying? Good coordination in planning the flight with the pilot will help here. Sticking to fairly straight flights will help as well. And of course, good communications with the pilot Maybe having the pilot calling out landmarks, for example. I'm over that big tree now. The second issue is detecting hazards at long distances. Spotters are expected to use their unaided eyes when performing their duty. The intent being, sensibly, to have the broadest view of the sky possible. But Transport Canada has confirmed that the spotter can occasionally grab a pair of binoculars to help them 
When you're looking at a section of airspace a couple of kilometers away, a speck in the sky could be an incoming Cessna or a distant airliner, or maybe even just a near, nearby sparrow. So the visual observer could say to the pilot, hold on, I see something in the area, I'm checking with my binoculars. Okay, all clear, it's just a bird, carry on. By the way, one really good tip for communicating with the pilot is to give instructions in terms of positive actions. Always say what you want them to do, not what they should not do. For example, if you see an aircraft approaching above the drone, say something like, aircraft approaching, descend immediately, rather than aircraft approaching, don't go any higher. Positive statements are more clear and less likely to be misinterpreted by an already busy pilot. Another consideration, unless you're in very open terrain, like in the prairies or perhaps standing on a hill or mountain, there could easily be trees or other obstructions that will block the spotter's view of where the drone is flying. And I'm not talking about obvious stuff like nearby trees. The trees way over there on the other side of the lake behind me are about 20 meters high and 500 meters away. This diagram illustrates how easily these fairly normal sized trees a half a kilometer away could still restrict your flight to a range of only two and a half kilometers, assuming the usual flight ceiling of 120 meters. Otherwise, your drone could be flying in airspace the spotter cannot actually see, what I'm labeling the blind zone in the diagram. And the closer the trees are, obviously the sooner you'll be hitting that blind zone. So do a very thorough site survey, plan your flight carefully, and consider high ground for your spotter. Finally, one other restriction in the rules is to keep your drone 30 meters away from bystanders. The visual observer is very unlikely to be able to help here, given the distance away where the drone is flying. So the drone pilot will need to use the camera on the drone to scan the ground as they're flying in order to avoid flying near people. So there you have it, extended VLOS, a new option for advanced drone pilots to legally fly out of visual line of sight with the assistance of a qualified spotter. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to share them below the video. Thanks for watching.